Okay guys, today's a very exciting day because I only get to do one of these videos like a couple times a year. We are opening up a massive, epic, 12 pop mystery box from Pop in a Box. That is right, 12 mystery Disney Funko Pops, except it's not really a mystery. I literally know everything that is inside all of these boxes. I'll explain in a second, but first, welcome to Teacup for One. My name is Matt and I have two degrees. And like I said, friends, oh, today's an exciting day because I only get to do an unboxing of epic proportions like this maybe once or twice a year. Like I am really excited, um, except for the fact that again, I know literally everything that is in these boxes. Now for some context, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you might remember that a few months ago, I ordered a 12 pop subscription box from Pop in a Box, the 12 Disney Pop subscription box. It was because I got a promo code to get 50% off a new subscription box and I thought to myself, you know what? I've seen this 12 pop box floating around as an option for so long and it just always seemed so out of reach. I was like, why would anyone get that? And then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna get that. At the time, it was partially because I wanted to test out the pop tracker to see how accurate it was, to see if they were gonna send me anything I said I didn't want. It was actually a really fun video. But let's be honest, in my heart of hearts, I just wanted to get 12 Disney Funko Pops. And so, a couple months later, when I had another promo code sent to me to get 50% off a subscription box, I thought, you know what? I want to do that again. And also, when I got that code, that was when the Walt Disney World 50th Anniversary Collection had just been announced, like Mickey, with Cinderella's castle, even though it's technically Sleeping Beauty's castle, check that video out. The pirate dog, Space Mountain, like there was a lot of good stuff that had just dropped. Not to mention the entire Beauty and the Beast collection, the entire Disney Villains collection that we've been waiting for for, I kid you not, a year. Hopefully that'll happen this year. We'll see. Plus the totally mini collection, like there were a lot of good Disney pops. So I figured I'm putting the order in, hopefully I'll get all of these pops that I really want. And um, spoiler alert, I didn't get any of the pops that I just told you. How do I know? Because Pop in a Box is doing a new thing, and I guess some people like it. I'm personally not a fan. Granted, I could have made different choices, but Pop in a Box is doing this new thing where when you have a subscription, once it ships, in the dispatchment email that you get, that like we've always been getting, the ones that say, oh, your order has been processed, it's on its way. Now they're doing this new thing where they show you the pop that's coming in your subscription box. And like part of the fun for me has always been being surprised. And I know I like I don't have to look at the email. I can just choose to like not scroll down, but if it's there, obviously curiosity is gonna get the better of me. I'm obviously going to look. So, with that said, I know exactly which 12 pops we are about to open, and I'm not too thrilled about them but also I kind of am. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. We'll get excited together. But I just wanted to give you that heads up because I know in the last video when I opened up the 12 Pops, I was so excited. It was like Christmas day and I just wanted to give you that heads up to let you know that today's video, I'm probably not going to be as excited as I was in the last one, partially because I know what's in the boxes. So the element of surprise, dead. Also, because even though like literally half of these Pops would probably be grails and dream pieces for some collectors. I am not one of those collectors. Like, half of these pops are very much hand in hand with a fandom that it, like has a very strong fan base, but I'm just not part of that fan base. I'm like an appreciator, but I'm not part of the club. Although I will say one thing that is quite exciting about this 12 pop subscription box is that it's kind of like a dodo bird. It's an extinct species because, okay, I placed this order back in December, so it took a while for it to show up. Obviously, they had to get pops, I guess, in their inventory to fulfill a 12 pop order. But over the past month or two, it looks like Pop in a Box has completely changed their subscription model because you used to have the option to get one, two, three, six, or 12 pops per month, and then the shipping would be like $4.99. From what I can tell now, at least in Canada, you can only get two pops per month and shipping is now $9.99. Like those other options that I loved are no longer available. And it looks like if you already had a subscription, like me, I have my one pop subscription and I guess now my 12 pop subscription, I think you've kind of been grandfathered in and they're still going to continue honoring those subscription boxes, but you can't sign up for a new subscription box for anything aside from two pops per month with the new shipping rate is the impression that I've gotten. And so, I'm actually tempted to stay on as a 12 pop subscriber 
just because now it's rare. I don't know. We'll see. Let me know if you think I should, because at the very least, next time I'll know better than to read the email, because I can still be surprised. Anyway, let's open up these pops. Okay, pop number one. Again, I know what it is, but you don't, so it'll be kind of a surprise for you. Now, something that's kind of cool is you will notice I have ugh, three individual shipments here because classic pop in a box thing you know if they're trying to fulfill an order they have warehouses in a couple different places so they will ship from different locations and that is kind of and that is the nice thing with pop in a box shipping is that it's a flat rate even though now it's 9.99 it used to be 4.99 but it's a flat rate and no matter how many shipments go out like that one time payment that you pay covers it so Kind of fun. Okay, here we go. First pop in my 12 pop subscription box. Oh, okay. This might be a first-hand account of something I've spoken about before, but haven't gotten to actually show on the channel. Not great shipping. Now, I don't want to make any assumptions, but when I've gotten pops from Pop in a Box before in this shape box with this paper, the pop is usually, like, the box is usually not in great shape. Now, not saying it will happen. I'm just saying probably will happen. Oh no, it's in good shape. Okay, here we go. All right, here we are, friends. The very first pop, Pride Collection Stitch. So much. There is so much that's beautiful about this pop. I just, you know, first, I just love the entire Pride Collection. I'm going to read what it says to you on the back of the box. Our Funko Pride Pop Collection is a celebration of inclusivity and acceptance. Funko fully supports the LGBTQ plus community and rejects intolerance and discrimination in Florida. I added that part in. A donation has been made to the It Gets Better Project, an organization that uplifts, empowers, and connects LGBTQ plus youth around the globe in coordination with this program. Like, I just love that Funko has started to do pops with purposes. Like, we have the Pride Collection, they just did the Make-A-Wish Collection, and the pops themselves are absolutely beautiful. And I actually think I have this in, like, not rainbow form. Anyway, this is a really great one to start with, and I dedicate this pop to Florida. You know what you did. Do better. Next. Okay, pop number two. Yes. We have... Celia from Monsters, Inc., a.k.a. Mike's Girlfriend, a.k.a. The Medusa Lady. Like, this is really exciting. I know that Monsters, Inc. had their entire, I think, 20th anniversary collection. Yeah, 20th. 20th anniversary collection released last year. Actually, that was one of the collections that released when I placed this order. So I was anticipating getting a couple Monsters, Inc. pops. Like, Celia, she's not my favorite character, but, I mean, how can you not love her? I especially... <laughs> Like, looking at it now, I didn't realize how much I would... I didn't anticipate how much I would love the snakes that make up her hair. They just have so much personality unto themselves. Like, looking at them, like, looking at the ones with their tongues sticking out specifically, they have this kooky kind of Muppet vibe going for them, which I think is hilarious. Now, it looks like she's on a stand, which I actually appreciate because it means they didn't have to sacrifice the integrity of the character design. Like, the pop that comes to mind to me is one of the very first aerial pops where... It's just Ariel as a mermaid, but she's very, like, the fin is designed so that's also a support system. It sacrifices the integrity of the pop. They didn't make that mistake with Celia. Even though she's not my favorite character in Monsters, Inc., I think this pop is just, it's so much fun. And, oh, it makes me want to get Mike Wazowski to go with her. Oh, and Boo is so cute, too! And the Yeti and, ugh. I just, I want, I want all of the Monsters, Inc. collection now, and... I know that they're not going to be in the rest of the box because, again, I looked at the email. Anyway, Celia, a winner. All right, here we go. We are about to open up the big box. Um, now, just in the interest of space, I think I'm going to put the big box slightly out of frame. Does that make it less fun for you? I don't care. Here we go. And I will just reach into the box and see what I pull out. Here we go. Ooh! Pop in a box discovered bubble wrap. That's exciting. Okay. What are we going to start with? Now, again, I know what's in this box, so I'm going to save the most exciting one and the one that I'm most excited for for last. Okay, let's start with this guy. Okay. I knew this was coming. Mostly because I don't think a lot of people want this collection. And with good reason. And I, I brought this on myself because I could have and should have thumbs him down on my Pop in a Box Pop Tracker, but I didn't. It's England. The entire country of England reduced to this one 
doll from It's a Small World. And I don't want to go on my It's a Small World rant again. I just don't like the designs. I don't think I don't think Funko Pops do justice to the beautiful doll designs from the Disneyland and the Disney World and well actually there's an It's a Small World in every Disney park. I don't think the Funko Pop design does justice to the Small World doll design. That's it. I think it just kind of wipes the doll clean of all the things that make them cute and endearing and they just look like generic kids who are Funko Pops. Although with that said, maybe it's because I have really low standards for this entire line. This guy's actually pretty cool. The color representation of the Union Jack flag, that's all top notch. Usually when I get these pops, my thoughts are, can I take cool pictures of them? I can probably make something work with him, but again, like if you look at this pop, you don't think, oh, it's a small world. You think, oh, generic British child, but there, now I have generic British child to go with generic American child and generic Japanese child. It's a small world after all. Next. And I know there's at least one more of those kids coming. Is it this one? No, we're going to save that one for last. Is it this one? Okay. This is Sandy Claus from Nightmare Before Christmas. Santa Claus. I'm going to tell you right now, I am not the biggest Nightmare Before Christmas fan. For the longest time, I almost thought I didn't like Nightmare Before Christmas. Eventually, I forced myself to watch the movie from start to finish, and now I have a healthy appreciation for Nightmare Before Christmas. And I don't love the story, I like the music, but my favorite thing, bar none, is the design. I think the character design and the stop motion animation element is so beautiful. So when it actually comes to the characters as Funko Pops, I'm a fan. I also think this is a super fun pop to have because I already have classic Santa Claus from the Peppermint Lane collection. So once we come around to Christmas time, I could probably take some cool like twinning photos of the two of them. And what I really appreciate with this pop is that the Tim Burton aesthetic is absolutely shining through. Yes, I know he didn't direct it, but his style influenced it. Just that swirl on the lollipop, classic early Tim Burton, awesome. Okay, Sandy Claus. Next, this one. Okay, it's Kenya. Entire country of Kenya. Reduced to one small world doll child. <sighs> like small world England child, now that I actually have Kenya in my hands, it's a weird sentence, now that I actually have Kenya, <laughs> like there are things that I can appreciate about this pop. I can appreciate the print on Kenya's outfit. And there's something extra special about when they do this type of printing on Funko Pops. I don't know, it just makes the detail pop a little bit more. And you know what, maybe if we had more of this, kind of like the patterning that I'm seeing on Kenya's outfit, then I'd be sold a little bit more. There's just something beautiful about that two-dimensional quality that makes the small world simplicity shine through a little bit. And it's what I'm missing from the other figures. I don't know, like Kenya, you're, you in England, you're fine. Okay, next. What the heck? This one? No. This one. <laughs> oh my gosh! He's so cute! Oh! It's zero in the duck cart. Alright, remember how I said that I know everything that's in the box and that like half of the pops are from a franchise with a huge fandom that I'm not a part of? Spoiler alert! It's Nightmare Before Christmas. So, if you haven't figured it out yet, <laughs> they sent me almost the entire Nightmare Before Christmas train. Plus Sandy Claus. So, this is the first train figure that we're going to be looking at today. It is Zero. He is in this duck cart. Zero, probably my favorite character in Nightmare Before Christmas, just because of the cute factor. But everything that I was saying about why I love the Sandy Claus figure, and just why I love the Nightmare Before Christmas figures as Funko Pops in general, is because they feel so true to the Tim Burton design. I especially love the detail in his eyes because the eyes are actually indentations inwards and then they're closed. So it's a little bit of a departure from the standard Funko Pop aesthetic, but you still get that Funko Pop aesthetic in a way that serves the character. But to me, the real standout here is just this duck cart. Like just look at that eye, look at that beak. This, again, to sound like a broken record, so evocative of early Tim Burton style. I love it. All right. Like this is just, this is one of those cases where you see the promo images, but once you actually have the figure in hand, it's so much cooler. Okay, we're halfway there. Living on a prayer. Next. And I mean, at this point, we're basically just looking at Nightmare Before Christmas train figures. Oh, I spoke too soon. It's Arthur from Sword in the Stone. 
<laughs> Let's be honest. This is the most basic and boring figure in the entire Sword in the Stone collection. I mean, out of all the figures in the Sword in the Stone collection, Merlin with Archimedes is probably my favorite. I just, I love the character design. I love any pop set that comes with a buddy. But, kind of like the Alice figure in the Alice in Wonderland collection, you can have the more kooky characters, which yes, are more fun to look at, but I think if you're gonna start collecting those figures, you need the main character. You need the one that's kind of boring, that grounds everything in the movie. So, Arthur with pots and pans. I mean, I am glad that I have this one, and it's not a pop that I really like enough to justify buying for myself, but it is one that I wanted, so this is actually the perfect scenario for me to get Arthur holding pots and pans. Now I just need to find Merlin and that damn owl. Next, this one, yes. Oh, this is bleeping awesome. Oh, okay, I said I wasn't gonna get excited. Maybe I just lowered my standards too much, but I'm really excited by this. So, it is another train figure. It is Oogie Boogie in Dice Cart. Of course, there are more exciting Oogie Boogie figures out there, but I don't have any of them because I don't care about Nightmare Before Christmas. The real standout to me here is the cart. And I think that's gonna be a running theme really with all of these figures. I know most Nightmare Before Christmas people would probably freak out about the characters, but like we've seen them as Funko Pops. Look at this cart. I probably shouldn't be getting this excited about the cart, but just the fact that it's dice and I just love that whole kind of gambling element that Oogie Boogie has going on. I think the distressing that they did on the dice is absolutely beautiful. I do wish that Oogie Boogie himself was a little bit more distressed. This looks like a more cleaned up Oogie Boogie. And when I think of him, I just think of like an old raggedy burlap sack. But, you know, I guess he's going on a train. He got himself dressed up for the occasion. There we go. Next. I like this one. This one, this one, this one, this is the one train figure that I considered getting for myself in spite of me not loving Nightmare Before Christmas. Sally in cat cart. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love her. Ah. Okay, I know I said Zero is my favorite character in Nightmare Before Christmas, but I think Zero is everyone's favorite character in Nightmare Before Christmas because so cute. Sally, Sally might also be my favorite character in Nightmare Before Christmas, or at the very least, she's like the main character that has my heart. I don't really care for Jack. I think Jack is kind of a jerk, but like, I just, there's something so beautiful and endearing about Sally. She also reminds me of the Patchwork Girl from the L. Frank Baum Oz series, and she's voiced by Catherine O'Hara, a Canadian treasure. But again, the true star of this figure the cart. It's a black bleeping cat. Need I say more? Black cats are my favorite animal. Oh, something I just noticed. This box does actually have damage on the back. The corner is folded up a little bit. Ugh. I mean, the boxes aren't a huge priority for me, but I do like them to be in good condition. At the very least, it's not crushed. Mmm. Not super happy about it, but it, you know, it's on the back. If I wanted to display her in box, you wouldn't notice. And I'm probably just gonna assemble all of them in a train anyway, so there it is. But if anyone is keeping track, this is the first pop to have some box damage. All right, nine pops in, three to go. This one. <laughs> and it is the mayor in ghost card. That's supposed to be a ghost? Really? That's a ghost? Okay, sure. Oh my gosh. I just remembered that the Mayor of Nightmare Before Christmas has like a reversible head. <laughs> In all the promo images of this figure, like it's only seen from front on. What I'm getting at is this pop has the Mayor's other head on the other side of him. This is so bleep and cool. <laughs> I think they picked a brilliantly shaped ride vehicle to complement the Mayor's head because the Mayor has like that triangular shaped head. So just by giving him that rounded ride vehicle, the entire figure has this like egg-shaped look to it that I think is so cool. And just going back to how they kind of play with the Funko Pop default, I like how he has one standard Funko Pop eye, then the other eye has this sort of swirl thing going for it. Again, maybe that's how he looks in the movie. Can't remember, but counter to Small World, these, these are characters 
that work with Funko Pop designs, and I'm here for it. There we go. Now, of course, what good is a train if you don't have a conductor? And I'm almost positive that this one, yep, Jack Skellington in the engine. This is pretty darn exciting because this is a little bit more of a deluxe figure. So all the other figures that we've gotten are just kind of standard Funko Pop figures. And I will say, I love that Funko, kind of a sidebar, I love that Funko has started the Pop Trains collection because I think that's probably the same collection that the People Mover from the Disney World collection is a part of, as well as the Disneyland train. Anyway, I think it's so cool because they're priced as standard Funko Pops, but I think they're elevated just that little bit more because you get the figure, plus you get this amazing vehicle, and then you can put them all together and you have a train. I love it. But again, what good is a train without a conductor? And we have Jack in the engine. No surprises here. The real star of this figure for me is going to be the train. I love the color. I love the embellishments on it. I love the fact that that front part, the part that I think is supposed to get cows out of the way. I don't know how trains work. I love that that's a spider web. But even just the amount of character that we have in Jack, I think he's showing us more personality in this figure than we get from him in the entire movie. I said what I said. And I love it. I just think when you put all these together, it just tells this beautiful Funko story. And even though I don't love Nightmare Before Christmas, as I have said multiple times in this entire video, I love a well-designed Funko Pop. I love the artistry of that movie. And it's kind of exciting to me that I now have an entire train set that I can put out for Halloween and then just leave out and say that it's part of my Christmas decor. And then I'll have no excuse in November, really, but it is what it is. But of course, that is not all, because if you'll count, well, just a second, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you'll count, we have 11 pops here. This is a 12 pop box. We're moving on to the grand finale, the pop I am most excited for. One of the pops that I was secretly hoping I would get in this box. The time is now. Captain Hook on Peter Pan's flight. Oh, this figure is absolutely stunning. Like the Pop Rides figures have to be some of my favorite lines. I, I am just a sucker for a Funko Pop that is riding a cool vehicle. Actually, I think we've learned that from this entire train collection. But this one is just extra thrilling for me because one of my favorite things that Funko has started doing in the Rides collection is commemorating classic Disney ride vehicles. It kind of gives a whole new name to the line Pop Rides because normally it's just like a transportation vehicle, but this is literally a ride vehicle. And if there are any other Disney Parks fans out there, you know, ride vehicles, like those have a cult following unto themselves. I think there's something so magical about putting classic Disney characters in classic Disney ride vehicles, especially when you start to have a collection like my Mad Tea Party collection. Now, they did already release Peter Pan in the Peter Pan's flight vehicle, mm -hmm. which I actually got in my subscription box from Pop in a Box last year. So now I'm just like building the set. And the fact that we have a second one is giving me hope that maybe we'll see more Peter Pan characters continuing this pop ride line. And the reason that that's really exciting for me is because we have yet to see Wendy, John, or Michael as Funko Pops. And I would love, 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 to see Wendy in one of these ride vehicles. Because Wendy's like one of the greatest Disney characters. Do justice to her. But what's really cool about this pop is that if you were to pair it with the Peter Pan pop ride figure, it, again, it tells a story because in that figure, it looks like Peter is about to fly out of his ride vehicle. In this, it looks like Hook is about to jump out of his ride vehicle to chase him. This is also my personal first Captain Hook pop in my collection. He is one of the greatest Disney villains and I just love everything about this design. Just the extravagance of the hat alongside the feather, the hook, just there's so much beautiful detail here. My one qualm is that he is riding the exact same vehicle as Peter. And again, if you're a Disney Parks fan, you know Disney ride vehicles, they all have slightly different color schemes. That's what gives them a unique quality. Everyone has their favorite. Like I have my favorite teacup that I ride in. And all the pirate ships on Peter Pan's flight have slightly different paint jobs. This is the same paint job. So they could have made a better choice there. Laziness, who knows, but whatever. I have Captain Hook now. I'm a happy mat. There you have it, friends. 
my 12 pop pop in a box subscription box box but of course you know the drill by now it wouldn't be an unboxing video for a mystery box if we didn't check to see the true value of these pops it doesn't matter what i think about them it only matters what they're worth on the funko market am i going to sell them probably not but like let's just let's see if i got my money's worth now for context the regular price of this 12 pop subscription box back when it was a thing I think is around 150 bucks Canadian. So let's round up, let's say like 160 with shipping. So ideally, we want the value of these pops to be more than $160, you know, to see if we got our money's worth. In reality, with my discount, I only paid like $70. So for me and Matt's wallet, we want this to beat 70 bucks. Okay, let's go. Pride Collection Stitch, $11. Sword in the Stone Arthur, $15. Celia from Monsters Inc. $18. Kenya, $11. England, $13. Sally and Cat Cart Meow, $28. Sandy Claus, $14. Oogie Boogie in Dice Cart, $29. Mayor in Ghost Cart, $32. Zero in Duck Cart, $33. Jack Skeleton in Engine, $39. And the grand finale, my personal favorite in the entire set, Captain Hook on Peter Pan's flight, $32. Now we math. Okay, for a grand total of $275, holy bleep. So again, if I paid full price, I still would have made like what, 125 bucks? But the fact that I got this at an incredible discount because of that like once in a lifetime or I guess twice in a lifetime promo code, I paid just around $70 and it's worth $200 more than that. Maybe I should sell them. No, they're too cool. I can't, I can't, but they're mine and they're worth so much and I didn't pay that much. Okay, I consider this a win. And you know what? I think I've decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold out. I'm gonna stay subscribed to the 12 Pop Box at least one more time so that hopefully I can get as good a value as I did today. But also I just, I would have loved to have been surprised for this video. You know, of all the changes that Pop in a Box has made recently, I realize that this is probably the most insignificant one, but I just don't like that they tell me what I'm getting before it shows up. Ugh, lesson learned. Don't read your emails. And with that, friends, where's my teacup? And with that, friends, this concludes yet another episode of Teacup 41. Now let me know in the comment section down below which of these pops that I received was your favorite. And if you want to be the first to know when I release more videos unboxing Funko Pops or talking about Disney, sometimes Shakespeare, sometimes cats, sometimes movies, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And if you haven't subscribed already, it is super easy. All you have to do is click on my face. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. My name is Matt, and I have two degrees, and that's the T. Come for one. Go away.